When we look at modern fashion, rarely do we associate a piece with tragedy. Most of the dresses we look at are revered either due to their wearer, the designer, or the event, but not as often because of unexpected, horrific circumstances. Very few have such a hold on pop culture and sentiment, especially in the United States, as Jacqueline Kennedy's pink Chanel suit dress. Today, we're going to look at the history surrounding Jackie's famous pink dress. If you want to learn more about the inaccuracies regarding the design and the tragic events that surrounded its fame, as well as why I put air quotes around Chanel, stick around and we'll go over it, as well as look at some representations of it in film, TV, and pop culture. So before we go into the events that made the dress iconic, we have to talk about the conception of the dress. Jackie O as the first lady and the fashion of the time. Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy became first lady of the United States in 1961, at a time marked by straight silhouettes and bright colors. Jackie, as a socialite of high class American society and the first lady to be extensively televised, became a fashion icon in American culture. She was known for always being prepared in the face of the public eye. She did not leave her room or house without looking perfectly picturesque ready. And this was definitely a new phenomenon. And as I said, being in such a highly televised environment, one that had not existed, at least not as intensely and consistently before her time as first lady, added to the influence Jackie Kennedy's outfits had on the culture and people's perception of fashion and the first family. And Jackie Kennedy was definitely a huge fashion icon in the 20th century. To try to explain how meaningful the media engagement was in terms of making Jackie a fashion icon, just imagine for a second living in a time when you don't even necessarily know what the US president looks like, or even pop culture icons in general. Before the age of photography, people didn't have constant access to celebrities or influential people. And by the late 50s and early 60s, TV appearances became more popularized. So we have the advent of elections being televised and celebrities and socialites becoming known and even sometimes adored by the public. And Jackie O was no different. So all of a sudden, everyone knew what the first lady was wearing all the time, and she was no stranger to fashion. She grew up in a wealthy family and once interned with a company for fashion journalism. When she became first lady, there was a rumor that she spent tens of thousands of dollars on imported clothing using JFK's presidential salary, drawing a poor review for the general populace in the United States. Though Jackie denied spending anywhere near that amount, many people in America didn't see the first lady's supposed lavish spending habits especially on products made in other countries, as a particularly noble attribute. So to ease the minds of many Americans, Jackie began wearing only clothing made in the United States. Luckily, there were some French designers who lived in the United States and made high fashion pieces. This is where the pink dress comes in. In terms of her fashion and style, Jackie's outfits often centered around sleek, chic designs with less fitted silhouettes and bold colors. And though color always holds symbolism in art and fashion, it's particularly important in American politics. Besides the traditional red, white, and blue, colors such as pink, like the dress, held certain meaning and symbolism as well. Pink had come to represent femininity, the ideal female. The shape of Jackie's outfits, the sleek, straight-lined, almost geometric silhouettes, think big buttons, boxy frames, shoulders, but no cleavage, pillbox hats, represented sophistication, elegance, and timelessness. She was a woman of high society and well-renowned, and she wanted to present herself in such a way that made herself known to others, and it worked. People knew, and still know today, a Jackie O look when they see one. Not only that, fashion in the 60s and onwards was heavily influenced by Jackie O's outfits. From bright pops of color on sleek silhouettes, to the structured wool suits, Jackie's style has had a long-lasting effect on American fashion in particular. A Jackie O look is not hard to spot. 
That's how far reaching and iconic her personal style is. But before we get into some modern day examples, let's look more closely at her famous piece, The Pink Dress. As I mentioned, Jackie caught a lot of flack for buying outside the United States. So by 1963, when she wore the pink suit dress, Jackie made sure to commission work from US based designers. Though many think of the pink dress as a Chanel suit, a dress style extremely popular in the 1960s, the dress itself was not Chanel. Though there's still mystery surrounding the specifics of the designer, it's still believed to be a chaise ninon, which was a New York atelier greenlit by Chanel. As I said, Jackie was careful about where she bought her clothes from due to the political backlash concerning non-American clothes. Chez Ninon then was the perfect compromise for Jackie. They had the same designs as one of her favorite designers, but at a reduced price made in the United States. This combination worked to please both Jackie and the general American population that kept a close eye on her. The suit itself, with its bright bubblegum or raspberry pink exterior, navy lining, and large gold buttons was made with Chanel pieces. The details of the dress, like the gold buttons with navy trim, match quite well with the navy purse with a gold buckle Jackie chose to pair with the dress. Her navy low heels complemented the look. Plus, she wore the outfit many times before the last time, and we'll get to that, so it had lots of utilization. In fact, it was supposedly one of JFK's favorite outfits that his wife wore. It's honestly one of my favorites too. I just love the bright pink and the pillbox hat. Though the fabric was not Chanel, the buttons and additions to the suit were shipped from Chanel, and the design was given to Chez Ninon by Chanel. Hence, potentially, why so many people confuse the dress for Chanel. There is still question and speculation surrounding it due to the fact that the dress hasn't been in the public eye since Jackie O wore it one fateful day in November 1963. So now we get to the event that made this outfit live on the collective pop culture mind. Before heading to a presidential event in Texas, JFK is said to have requested that Jackie wear the pink suit. He supposedly asked Jackie's staff for it specifically. It was, as I said, one of his favorites. And for the day of the event, he told Jackie to wear something simple and elegant to show the conservative Texas woman what class looked like. Furthermore, she needed an option that wouldn't be too warm as it was set to be a warm November in Texas. On November 22nd, 1963, JFK and Jackie were participating in a presidential motorcade in Dallas, Texas. During the ride, the president and first lady experienced a horrifying trauma when JFK was shot and assassinated. Sitting directly next to him, Jackie got blood all over her outfit. Lyndon B. Johnson, the vice president at the time, and his wife, Lady Bird, were driving in the car next to JFK and Jackie on the way to the hospital. Lady Bird was said to have seen a flash of pink through the window, assuming that it was the first lady laying over her husband's body. Thus, the dress was most certainly covered in blood. After the incident, Jackie's staff set aside another outfit for Jackie to change into but she refused. After wiping blood off of her face, she rethought the decision. She thought it would have been a better decision to leave it on her face to show people. She's famously quoted saying, let them see what they've done. As a public figure, Jackie had built up a reputation, a persona, even of strategically showing people what she wanted them to see. And this moment was no different. In a day full of shock, and tragedy, she chose to ensure that history would be preserved. She stayed a symbol of her role and identity. Now we can't ignore the fact that she was going through an extremely traumatic time and that it would have been perfectly understandable if she wanted to change and not be seen and not talk to the press at all. But this is the history of it. And it's where the legacy of the pink 
suit dress stems from. It's also noteworthy that given the trauma she had experienced, she might not have been thinking about what she was wearing too much or too often. She made the decision to keep it on and didn't take it off until she returned to the White House. Though the dress itself is now locked away in the National Archives and kept in pristine condition, other than the pillbox hat which was lost that day, its claim on pop culture has stemmed far and wide. Many TV shows and movies have utilized the concept of the dress to represent various ideas of femininity and power. And I feel like I saw the suit in pop culture like when I was super young before I even like put it together, the reference with Jackie Kennedy's suit. First and foremost, and the example that stands out the most in terms of movies is Reese Witherspoon as Elle Woods in Legally Blonde 2. If we look at the trajectory of her character and her growth from the first movie to the second, we can look at the utilization utilization of a similar pink dress as a symbol of feminine power and, in this day and ages, terminology girl bossing. Elle goes from a sorority girl without a path to a top lawyer who wins her cases and even takes a bill to Congress. The pink suit dress, as an ode to Jackie O, stands as a reminder of the strength inherent in femininity. Elle isn't necessarily what everyone expects of a good lawyer, but she succeeds nonetheless. Though pink sometimes gets a bad rep for being a girly color, Legally Blonde 2 and Elle Woods reclaim the color and make it known that being a woman and wearing pink is not a weakness. It's the exact thing that allows the wearer to accomplish their goals and stand steady in the face of adversity. Elle's growth then is personified in her wardrobe choice, and her journey to DC is marked by the outfit choice, further showing the connection between Elle and Jackie. Even though it's strikingly apparent given that Elle's dress is both the same style and color as Jackie's, and I was obsessed with Legally Blonde when I was younger. I remember I saw it several times in the theater and I basically based my whole life around it and like went to fashion school because of it. So it was a huge inspiration for me and it's interesting now that it's become a cult classic. Now an example that offers a different connotation of the dress and Jackie in general comes in a Simpsons episode in scenes from the class struggle in Springfield which aired in 1996. The first Simpsons episode written and directed by woman Marge Simpson owns a pink suit dress reminiscent of Jackie's dress. After putting it on, Marge feels in charge as a character. She gets an invite to a country club, she gains a new sense of joy and confidence, she finds some of her dreams and long lost hopes in through wearing this piece. When the suit is no longer wearable, she is blank face smile gone. Her fantasies of high society living outside of a place like Springfield where she has to wear many hats as a mother and a wife no longer exists. In this way, the suit represents the wealth of the Kennedy family. It acts as a pedestal upon which the American people put them on and the unreachable status they possessed. In that way, it's similar to the representation of power we see in Legally Blonde 2. And I honestly remember watching the Simpson episode when I was a kid. I actually really liked this episode, probably because pink is one of my favorite colors. And I just remember Marge like altering the suit to wear to different occasions to keep up with these country club girls. I don't know. I just really remember watching this episode when it aired when I was a kid. And I was a huge fan of the Simpsons in the 90s. I know a lot of people's parents didn't let them watch the Simpsons but mine did and I just I don't know I really like that cartoon the 90s were the best in terms of fashion one recent instance of Jackie Kennedy inspiration comes from Mochino's 2018 fall show though the colors of the dresses are different from pink to orange to yellow and on the designer made a statement by sending some of the models out in bright colored body paint which I thought looked really cool in contrast to the suits from blue to yellow to lime green Mochino added a modern even postmodern twist to the classic classic Jackie O style, and I love their hairstyles too. Popular models such as Gigi and Bella Hadid, Kaya Gerber, and Joan Smalls all participated in the show. Mochino used other popular silhouettes from the 60s, including evening wear with silk and embellishments. The designer added modern pops of color and patterns to the classic silhouettes and bouffant style hair. 
In fact, given that each look was not an exact replica of the pink dress, we can recognize the ode to Jackie through a few of the components that stayed consistent throughout the runway show. For one, most of every model had a pillbox hat and a bouffant hairstyle, the shape of the dresses, a jacket and a skirt with a purse and heels, kept the aura and the style alive while mixing textures, fabrics, and prints, ushering in the modern age. Though the mixing of styles, Mochino created a loud and vibrant exhibition in a season with many other subdued looks. And I just love this runway show. I actually remember when it came out and I was super excited about it, just how retro it was. Actually, I think a lot of people even told me about it too, because obviously I love vintage. Looking at music, two examples stand out in particular. In Lana Del Rey's 2012 National Anthem music video, the singer wears a suit dress and a bouffant hairstyle with a pillbox hat. The lyrics in the song speak about the pleasure of living a lavish, high-class lifestyle once again as we saw in The Simpsons, pointing out the almost royal status the Kennedys hold in American culture. When an artist wants to use an example of richness and power, the Kennedy family often comes to the forefront. For one, JFK and Jackie are far enough in the past that there's a nostalgic feeling surrounding the homage. The couple, regardless of any individual flaws, holds a positive connotation in the general popular culture of the modern day. Given the chance, everyone would want to have a taste of their lifestyle. But just as in Del Rey's song, life in the spotlight comes with consequences, sometimes harsh, even fatal ones. Once again, however, the classic look of Jackie O's style, even if it's not recreated exactly, depicts the symbolism of the Kennedys. Similarly, Ariana Grande wore a Jackie-inspired outfit in her 2020 music video, Positions. In the video, Video, we see her acting as both a president and a first lady in the White House. She signs papers in the button jacket and pillbox hat, which is held up by her profound hairstyle. In this way, Grande flips the traditional narrative on its head, insisting that Jackie can be the boss just as well as JFK can, so to say. She furthers the notion that the classic suit dress can be feminine and represent power at the same time. It hints towards female success and leadership, giving a stronger voice to a population so often undervalued and underestimated, especially in American politics. By choosing to wear a Jackie O inspired outfit, Grande conveys this point to us seamlessly in the few seconds she wears it. She also adds a modern twist by making her heels very high and keeping her personally iconic cat eyeliner. The association mixed with the modern twist brings together the past and the future, suggesting that we can look to the past figures and rethink their roles in an attempt to imagine a more progressive future. And I just love the vintage inspired aesthetic and I love seeing everyone's different twist on it with the bouffant hair, the cat eyeliner, especially Lana Del Rey. I really think she does that Americana 1950s, 60s throwback really well. In most movies and TV shows, the focus on JFK and Jackie Kennedy, we also see some replication of the dress. Of course it draws focus due to the assassination, but it's also shown in scenes where Jackie is alone, such as in the 2016 film Jackie. We witness moments of the first lady in her pink dress showing her vulnerability as well as well-known celebrity type. Her identity is also wrapped up in her role that it's almost impossible to show her in media that centers around her story without showing the pink dress. It is her legacy. It's what sets her apart from many other first ladies. But it also is what sets a precedent for other first ladies to dress in such a way that would reflect their personalities. And I feel like a lot of first ladies since Jackie always look back at her style to wear something similar, similar look to kind of have that first lady presidential look. She's kind of just become an iconic person that everyone looks up to for like a classic style. Jackie is not Jackie without her signature style and thus the TV show and movies that recreate her would be remiss not to use utilize her style within their representations. Whether it's fair or not for people in the public eye to be required to dress a certain way or maintain a certain level of elegance, it is how our society 
and culture has evolved in the past few decades due to media coverage especially. Jackie is one of the trendsetters of this phenomenon. Individuals who hold a strong public fascination and presence often end up creating images and icons of themselves or something associated with them, such as their clothing. Jackie's pillbox hat and suit is connected to her just as Marilyn's <laughs> white dress is to her just as Audrey Hepburn's little black dress is to her. We know Know and recognize these symbols because of the individual who makes them important or noticeable in the first place. And that is so true because when you think of these different icons in the 20th century, right away you just think of these specific pieces of clothing that they wore. What the modern day shares with the 60s is the constant media attention. And it true is a reflection of Andy Warhol at the time. I feel like Andy Warhol would have loved being alive today because he said everyone will be famous for 15 minutes and it is so true what he said. Though Interestingly, the color of Jackie's dress, for example, was not publicly known until the color photos of it were published later. And that is insane to me to think about because back then so many things were still in black and white. Maybe one of the most interesting aspects of the pink dress story is its future. The dress itself is not allowed to be stored in public until the year 2103. When Jackie Kennedy Onassis died, her possessions were left to her daughter, Carolyn Kennedy. The dress had already been sent to the National Archives by Jackie's mother, but Carolyn made the decision to keep the dress stowed away for the foreseeable future. She did not want any reminders of the assassination plaguing the family and being accessible to the public. Its exact location within the archives is not known but it's said to be kept in a temperature controlled room with precise humidity to preserve the dress. In theory, it looks exactly how it did that day, blood stains and all. And let's hope when people can see this dress that there's not a new Kim Kardashian 100 years from today that thinks it's okay to suddenly wear it, I don't know. Possibly part of the intrigue of the dress stems from the fact that nobody can see it. It's forever ingrained in the minds of people through photographs, but it's not like any other important piece that's held in museums. The allure of it, then could stem from its elusiveness. People want what they can't have. And if they can't have it, why not use it as a symbol of Americanism, powerful femininity, and resilient strength? Though Jackie struggled a lot after the assassination, as anyone would assume, and reportedly did not enjoy the spotlight that had been thrust upon her, she was forever marked as a symbol of American pain and strength due to her tragic loss. The dress happened to be the piece that ended up acting as an inanimate representation of a mix of values and ideas. So after learning more about the iconic pink suit and talking about its legacy in modern movies and pop culture, are there any others you can think of that we didn't cover? What are your thoughts about the dress and its history? What do you think about its current state and future plans? I'd love to hear any thoughts you have in the comments section. Jackie O's pink dress is definitely one of the most iconic outfits in fashion history and the context of its fame is both tragic and fascinating at the same time. The meaning it possessed before the assassination and the meaning it took on after. It's much more complex and meaningful in its story and symbolism than many of the fashion pieces we look at. Had it not been the outfit Jackie chose on that day, it might not be so iconic. It'll be interesting to see future examples of this dress in movies, and music videos, and pop culture generally. It's sure not to go anywhere anytime soon. If you enjoyed this video, I definitely want to make more like it. And if you want to learn more about fashion and pop culture, hit the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments below what other iconic historic fashion pieces you want me to cover and make sure you check out some of my other videos right next to me. All right, I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.